It is power up time. We've done P, we've done R. Make sure you've been watching those if your life's up. Uh, now it's time for reading. Trisha and I last week spoke about what we're reading and we've been getting really, really into The Hobbit, uh, not only for Tolkien Day or for Nerdist's Book Club, um, but it's now time to talk about what Sam Basher is reading. So Sammy. Hello. No, you don't like Sammy. You don't like Sammy. You like. You can Sammy. give it out. You can I, go ahead. I've, I've, I've loosened up on it. I always really? think of Sammy oh, from the What Do You Do With a Sammy Basher. Sammy. Uh huh. That's why I always think that from that. I would never just call you Sammy, though. It would have to be Sammy Basher. I'm Australian. Yeah, it's going to be the right uh, time. Like, people from New York who have a strong New York accent call me like Sammy. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. That's that the coolest cool. version of that. I wouldn't like that one. <laughs> So, Sam, what you reading? Okay, so uh, I fell in love with this book basically from the first page that I read. I currently am working on, uh, the, well, with quarantine, I've been trying to be creative, but it's been hard. But I've been chugging away at uh, some original content that I've been creating. And to help me, I, based on a lot of suggestions online, I picked up Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics. Now, have either of you guys read that book? No. It, oh, I hadn't even heard of it until you said this is what you were reading. Yeah, it's an in, it's a full dissection of what comics are and can be and what they were prior to it, the ni- like 1993 is when the book was published, but it's even more pertinent now and it's a full examination of the written word, of illustrations and uh and just art in general and uh throughout the book it asks you and challenges you to examine what you can do with the medium, not just uh, comic books, but also in literature, like the way you can explore different types of storytelling and what comics can mean for the reader di- in a different sense than what a normal novel can do. Because, the, the of course, the benefits of reading just a uh, written word novel is that you get the reader has their full imagination at play. But with a graphic novel, it allows the artist and the writer to kind of dictate what they're trying to show you. In some ways, people have called it like watching the storyboards for a movie that that's not finished, you know, but there is even more love and care that is put into some graphic novels. And I think that I, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes you're like, why they adapt that book into a movie? They're doing it all wrong. Personally, I felt that way with Lock and Key. And I feel that way with some comic books where it's like you're missing the point of what he's trying to say. And sometimes that lesson can only be taught in comics. And why is that? So this book fully explores why comics are the perfect medium for certain types of stories and how to develop those stories yourself. So if you... Um, it well just anything because he he examines uh, the evolution of Japanese manga and how it evolved separately from European comics as well as American comics because European comics are also like uh, what was the recent Valerian uh, the City of a Thousand Planets like the uh, evolution of that as well as like um, uh, 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 ooh Calvin and Hobbes or the Peanuts you know like the or like the the funnies you'd find in the newspaper the way that like yeah there are simpler jokes and some of them are purely for comedic. Uh, effect, but also the way that word bubbles can be placed, and the way that uh, store or the pictures can tell more than the words, and the way that you can be more subtle, but also fully get across the emotional impact of certain scenes. This book explores it, and also just to kind of give it outside of my ringing endorsement of this novel, on the back, Neil Gaiman. Alan Moore, who wrote Watchmen, uh, Art Spiegelman, who did Mouse, and um, oh, I'm blanking. Somebody else. Uh, they all give it the m- ringing endorsements on the back. And yeah, it's, Neil, it's Gaiman, so Neil Gaiman says it's a must read. And uh, Garth McMurray in chat says, I'm a comic artist and this book is a must read. So, And also Garth McMurray endorses it. It's so sweet, and it also kind of explores why, like, why do people connect more with cartoons and remember cartoons more than hyper-realistic faces? And it, it's like, I kind of always found myself, like, he kind of, throughout the book, shows you different ways people can latch themselves onto characters, even though they are drawn in the book. Like, in a regular novel like Harry Potter, the reader can see themselves as the character at times. But in, in a comic book, they kind of show you the different ways of designing the world and the people that inhabit that world so that the reader can relate with them more. Or if you don't want them to and you want it to be more informative, you can change it. And th- that doesn't mean that huh. there's definitive art styles for each of those. There's just different tools you can utilize throughout hmm. your storytelling process and how to work with an artist in a way that actually like becomes a duo-produced 
product and not just a writer handing off a script for an artist to bring to life in their vision. It's a way that pe multiple people can come together and create something truly special and their own. Like the way a movie isn't made with just a director, a movie's made with thousands of people. Or even on small crews, it's like 15 people. But like th this shows how f two to four people can tell the story that they want to tell in the most effective way possible. And it, and it, it, it does actually have uh, an emo it's not a narrative, but there is an emotional side to the book when you can see how much comics mean to Scott McCloud and even people who do enjoy the the medium. And when you can see the way he explores the infinity of the genre, uh, I got emotional reading it. And I'm getting emotional talking about it because I am I reread it uh, twice and I'm actually picking up, I ordered one of his other books. Um, I think it's Making Comics and that's coming on Tuesday and I can't wait to dive into that too because he has he has one of the best understandings of what people can do with the genre while also saying there's even more that he doesn't know while conceding that he doesn't know everything but at the same time you're like that's insane dude you've done the research you've done on this book is, is mind-boggling it's and it's uh, this yeah. is this is crazy sam you tearing up talking about it is putting it on my must read list so thank you for that ringing endorsement you know I don't know if I can trust Neil Gaiman. I know that I can trust Sam Basher. Uh, oh, but this you. is also, when you talk about the research that went into this, I did a little digging on it before the stream. And uh, did, did you know this is used as a textbook in a lot of schools? Wow. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. it is. And it's also just as a, another ringing endorsement. It's really short to read. I'm a big fan of <laughs> the books I can get through quickly. <laughs> um, and it's it was kind of sweet, too, that the book is is a graphic novel. The way that you read it is a graphic novel because he's trying to show you he he's trying to put his money where his mouth is like he's trying to teach you about the medium within the medium itself and i like that that is used as textbook so it can teach these new students like no this is what is possible he's going and telling mm -hmm. yeah i like that hey sam mm -hmm. are you making a comic I, I'm working on something right now, and I've been working with some artists to, to develop it, and it's really nerve wracking. It's really it makes me it. really nervous because it's because you want to. It's it's hard and it's expensive. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember you had that dream one day, and you came in and you're like, "I just had the best dream ever, and it would be the best premise for a comic book." And you like mm -hmm. started writing it down. Is this that? No, no, no. I did try, but not that. I, I'm actually working with... Um, I, the only thing I'll say for what this is, um, because I have another person working with me, is that there is music involved. And it makes it sound really confusing, but I don't want to say more because once it's finished, I think it will be something really special. At the most, at, at most it will be special for me. Um, so we'll okay. see how that goes. That's all I'm going to say. It I want to... I want to ask you yeah. so many questions about it, but I know that you don't want to reveal that information just yet. So I will try to hold off as best I what can. What percentage are you through? I have all, I, it's six issues and it's all outlined. So it's all like, I, I'm right. Basically, I'm just nervous about script writing right now and trying to make sure the story plays out in a way that is, because in, in from comic to comic, you do have to like, um, I highly recommend Animal Man by Grant Morrison too because there's a whole issue where he talk the writer actually is a character in the book in a DC comic book the writer is a character and he talks about that you have to sprinkle in certain amount uh, a percentage of action in a book to make it interesting but you not every comic book has action in it so how do you keep the reader like paying attention as you go so I'm trying to figure out what's my what's my version of that in this book because it's not an action oriented book so we'll see. Yeah. Very cool. Um, Sam, I was going to ask you if uh, Understanding Comics is available as an audiobook, but now I'm thinking about it and you probably need the illustrations to make it make sense, right? Yeah, because he re the it, one of my favorite elements in it is when he starts talking about the different ways different cultures have adapted, like illustrated graphic novels. And also, there's a great bit in there in the first chapter of even trying to describe what a comic is. Like when he's like trying to be like, it's not a picture, but it's not literature, but it's also not a film. So how do you figure out what it is in between all of that? And it's a very specific type of thing. But anyways, there is a moment where he starts talking about the way the arts... Uh, evolved and how in Japanese manga the books are th way thicker than in a U like in a, in a United States comic because they allow for longer moments where people are silent and you're able to live in the scene like a lot like an independent film where you're able to feel like the emotional uh, weight of certain scenes more and it's cool that he even demonstrates it with his own art style but using Japanese manga within the book it's very cool sure. yeah. yeah he's a cartoonist and a comics theorist that's like mm. what a sick thing to be
It's a cool name to come up with for yourself. Comic <laughs> theorist, yeah. Or legend. That's really yeah, awesome. Really Th- Sam, thank it's you really for good. thank you for putting this on our radar. This is really yeah, cool, I- and it's not something I would have stumbled upon otherwise. What's really interesting as well is that the um, first. Oh. Uh, no, we and, lost uh, Sam. Oh, but uh, no. All right. Well, then I'll tell you. I'll let. Oh, we've got Let's, a little technical. Uh, well, they can't see you yet either. Hold on. Time out. Let's see if we can get Sam to call back in. There we go. Oh, and now everyone's going to be in separate spots, but at least I have faces on the screen. This is my show now. What happened? <laughs> I'm the guest. Oh, well. All right. Uh, sorry. Sorry. For the rest of this show, I'm now the guest and you are co-hosting with Trisha or you have to be me and I'll be you. And we awesome. have Amy hey, in. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So, Maud, you were saying one last thing about this comic before we go into Bombs Away Q&A. What were you saying about Understanding Comics? Uh, Understanding Comics came out in 1993, and then Making Comics came out in 2006. So there's been 13 years between the two. So that's like what's really fascinating for me, what he's learnt in that interim. And obviously, like, if he was an expert the first time, just how much more he'd learnt in that time. So yeah, that's... No, I- I can't wait to read that. It's coming on Tuesday, and I'm probably going to finish it in about three hours because I read real fast. But I do, but I do take notes when I read his books because it's like it is like a class. I am learning a lot, yeah. and it's all just also since we all work in the entertainment business, the way that he analyzes the different ways that you can tell a story, it's really inspiring. I love that. And the chat was like, "How cool is it when someone who loves the thing talks about it?" That passion is so. Resonating, yeah, I, I dig that. Um, Amy, you are back. It is time for bombs away. This is our Q and A section. What's uh, what kind of questions have we got? Well, uh, just make sure that you guys watching right now on Twitch leave us some questions here uh, down below. So this one is actually from a Geek Bomber. You. This is um, over on our Patreon. This is from S, no Seb underscore X. Mm-hmm. How much time a week do you spend playing, watching, and reading? What's the usual percentage between each one of those? <laughs> Sam and I just both went, oi! It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. This is I'm a old. safe space. Mm-hmm. Per day or per week? Let's say per day. Ooh. Go, Sam. Go. Does, does, be- does reading to a tiny human count as time yes. reading? Okay. I say yes. Yeah. I want to tabulate, but I want Sam to answer first. So daily, oh. Let's break it down per day, and then you can extrapolate to the week. Thank you, Adam. Yes. So am I breaking it down per thing? Like how many how many hours yeah. am I playing? Oh God. Um, uh, currently, with the with the quarantine, uh, I'd say pl- playing three hours a day. This mm-hmm. is a lot. It feels like a lot. Watching. Well, I'm to be fair. The work I'm doing right now, I have stuff on in the background, but I'm going to count it. So like five hours a day watching something, but it's not really, it's passively watching. Um, it's like stuff to just kind of fill up the room, the sound of the room. And then reading, I read before I go to bed. So that's like an hour. That's like reading. I need to do that. I need to start reading before bed instead of just like playing more Animal Crossing. Or... Oh no, I, that's, I had to switch to do reading because I kept playing it. Cause I was like, I gotta catch tarantulas. I gotta get them so I can sell them the next day. I gotta get more I money. One yet. I haven't even seen one yet. Um, I'm playing minimum, an hour but when I had I had a day off yesterday and I when I have like a day off and it's like I dedicate sort of like that day to gaming you're looking between sort of like four and eight hours of gaming um watching I do watching for work so I am watching between uh one and three hours per show Mm. so that's 15 hours a week minimum um and then reading i listen to my books so i'm doing like uh, between half an hour and an hour walks a day even longer so that's when i'll be doing my reading and i've started listening before going to bed so i'll get out a chapter as i'm drifting off nice yay uh, uh, for, chat, do the maths for that one for mine it's a three two one so uh three hours playing two hours watching and approximately one hour reading uh and that's all of that reading time is not for me by the way all of that reading time is to my tiny human because we're doing preschool at home and that involves a Yay. lot of reading. Plus he gets books when he wakes up in the morning, he gets books before nap time and he gets books before bedtime. Um, and his favorite day, since we brought up Neil Gaiman so much today, 
Uh, his his favorite book is by Neil Gaiman. It is a children's book by Neil Gaiman called Tuesday, and it's about a sneezing panda. Oh, that's cute. <gasps> oh. Yeah, that's super cute. Bringing it all back around. Uh, yeah, it's it's very it's very cute. Um, but all my reading is for him. Playing, I play games when I stream, which is currently Final Fantasy VII. And, uh, and yeah, and my watching, after he goes, after Little Dude goes to bed around 8, I can stay awake for approximately two hours of TV time. And then I crash. And that's my day. But what time do you get up every morning? 6.30. Oh. Ooh. When was the last time you guys saw 6.30? <laughs> oh. Pff. When was the, the last time night. I got to sleep past 7.00? No, but three yesterday. three years and some change ago. How old is Logan? Three years and some change. <laughs> you seven? You don't? I had to wake up a couple of times uh, at four three fifty a.m. for work, and when I get flights. But like six thirty yeah. is people's wake up time in the chat. Yeah, no, right. I see. I see a talent in chat says ew six thirty. So definitely not six thirty for you. But also. We're potty training right now. So if I hear little footsteps at 630, I better leap out of bed and make sure that we sit on that pot. Otherwise, I'm leaping out of bed to clean up a nasty mess that I don't really want to clean up. So it gets you out of bed real fast. <laughs> I um, with the vomit today, so isn't that right, Zelda? Did you have a little <laughs> few all over the carpet? Yeah. <laughs> the girl. The girl. <laughs> this next question is from a Twitch viewer right now. STS2884 asks, are any of you watching My Hero Academia? I watched like the first three episodes. I don't know why I stopped. I I guess I, mm, I'm struggling with short form content. Hmm. Okay. It's like, I, um, I, watched, uh, I watched the first three seasons because Hulu has all the dubs and I don't, I people are gonna yell at me about subs or dubs. I don't care. The dub, the, uh, uh, English voice actors they have are really, really good for My Hero Academia. And season four just aired, but they don't have the dubs yet on Hulu. It's only on Crunchyroll, and I ain't buying another streaming service. So I'm going to wait until those come and I'll watch it. But that show is awesome. Really like it. Uh, what And what is it on? What channel? Hulu. Hulu. Again, Hulu. Hulu. That's why I'm like, I, when is, where do I, I find this? You. Okay. Hey, <laughs> shish. Oi, oi. Okay, I'll give you my okay. login. You're convincing me. <laughs> I mean to, and and uh, actually, I think Hector Navarro, good friend Hector Navarro, uh, hit me up on Twitter today and was like, "Remember, if you got the Disney Plus package deal, you might have free Hulu." And I was like, "Oh my God, you're a genius! I have to look and see if I have that." Mm. I'm not doing it right. I have like seven different services, and I have like, <laughs> yeah, HBO and Hulu and Disney Plus and Amazon Prime and Netflix and CBS All Access now because I had to get a show Ooh. for that. For, yeah, I have to get also like all of them for Quibi because I have to watch it all. Plus yeah. Quibi. Yeah. Plus Quibi. <laughs> Plus Quibi. Awesome. Yeah, but you get the first 90 days for free, so everyone should sign up and watch my mug every day. Yay. 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 All right, Amy, thank you know. so much for being our question queen for oh, Bonds Away ooh. Q&A. I love that. Question queen. That's oh, cool. I think that too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. Bombs Away Q&A, Question Queen. Amy, thank you so much, as always, for being lovely and gracing us with your presence. And uh, Sam, thank you for being such a stinking delight. Thank you for having me. I appreciate doing this. I've been popping on these uh, shows, especially this show. It's just been a nice uh, little bright light because I've been hanging out with myself a lot recently, and it's just nice to talk with people, catch up, make sure everyone's doing okay. So I appreciate being on here, and uh, it's a pleasure. So and Sam, don't, uh, don't say exactly where you live, but you and I are geographically close together now-ish? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, good. That's what I thought. Just double checking. So when this quarantine lifts, we'll hang out. Yeah, we're close. It would be the easiest. We'll come over and say hi. Even okay. if we're scared to like hug and high five and stuff, we'll just we'll wave. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I also want to know as well, talking about reading and your recommendation, because it's one that has really piqued a lot of interest. Let us know in the comments if you're going to read that book too. If mm -hmm. this is something that Sam has sold you on. Please, that would uh, be really cool if you guys read it because I recommended it. I feel I feel good about that. Yay! I know I love recommending things that I know people will watch, and I'm responsible for like making their day better because like mm -hmm. they've yeah discovered something. Um, but also you have comic book club. Tell everyone where you can watch comic book club. Live Thursdays on Periscope, just Twitter, 
Twitch or YouTube, just search Sam Basher on any of those. I might just start narrowing it down to YouTube because it seems like the most popular place, but 1 p.m. PST, uh, you can join and just keep an eye on my Twitter for announcements for what we'll be reading. And then also last week, I tested out calling people on Discord and having them come on and like review the book with me, which was actually pretty cool. I had some people who were watching live. I got their handle and we brought them on. It was fun. It was really cool. So please join me Thursdays, 1 p.m. PST. Perfect. Good little plug. Fishy, when are you going live next? Uh, the next time I will be live is tomorrow with the Naked Truth. Um, Roxy Stryer is going to be my guest on Naked, Str Naked Truth, which I very rarely do guests on Naked Truth. So uh, this is going to be a very special episode, and that is tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time on my YouTube channel. When are you going live next, Mod? I will be on Quibi every Monday through Friday for just six minutes because I, I go through all the things that are currently out and basically... The amount of shows that are out there, I tell you, were ones that are good and worth watching. So if you need recommendations, I'm your gal. Uh, as far as going live, Amy, we just do this. We do this. Yep. Yeah, we do this. Live, live. That's Which it. Is, Fridays are my live days. That's a perfect segue to if you enjoy Power Up, make sure that you tune in next Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific time right here at twitch.tv slash Trisha Hirschberger if you want to catch it live. And if you cannot make it live, don't worry because it'll be available on all the podcast outlets over the weekend and then on Geek Bomb if you want to watch the video version just after that. So thank you guys all so much for watching and listening to Power Up. You're amazing. We'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bingo. Bye-bye. All right.